Hi everyone, welcome into My Chamber TV with a very special edition called Our Village because our village comes together to make things better. And I am your host, Barbara Marville Kelly. With me is my co-host, Paul Freelander, Hello. who is officially hosting our village Let's... special editions. That is usually the third Wednesday of every month, so that's very exciting. <laughs> and we also have a very lovely guest that has returned. I'm going to let you introduce Monica because you brought her in today. Well, Monica yeah. was gracious enough to come in at the last minute. But Always we happy. Were, it was the theme. You know, I got the message from Barb yesterday. It was the theme of the the whole theme of what was going on today. And our village, the concept that Barb had come up with was, you know, it sort of was a little bit impacted as, I guess that's not the right, you know, by Irma. Yeah. And some of the situations that were taken on. And, you know, Barb's always been a, she's always been a strong, strong supporter of what we do in this county. And how we all come together so this was a perfect time to bring it up you have been just a phenomenal part of this county oh, and gosh. all you've done with um <laughs> asap anybody that doesn't know what that is that is the alliance for uh, substance again, abuse for, prevention yeah, yes, yep. for substance abuse prevention thank you <laughs> and i would introduce her formally except there's just like way too many letters after her name <laughs> And I don't remember any of them. There's like about 30 or 40 letters after her name. Are you just but talking about my last name now? <laughs> I know that one's hard too. But Monica Rousseau, it's, it's a pleasure to have her on. I've, she's been on my chamber TV with us before. Yes. She's got some special things going on. And we've got some really special guests today. So yeah. tell us, um, I'm sure that even in your end of the industry, as, as tough as things are and as, as much as you're trying to get on top of things, the storm and those type of things start to affect people. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please. Um, I mean, do you mean the, the general public or us as an agency? Uh, you as how an we, agency and um, some of the people that you are looking out for. I'm sure. sure that so, abuse and things like that, unfortunately, probably goes along with stress. Oh, 100%. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if, if anybody knows anyone who has struggled with an addiction in the past and they haven't checked up on them, especially after the storm, please do so. Um, you know, there, there. Are, this is a huge stressor, and we know people who are displaced. You know, everyone's displaced, and uh, that is that can be a trigger for a lot of people. Um, as an agency, the storm happened right before our annual conference, and as you know, a lot of events were rescheduled. Yeah. And so we had this, you know, we had this tough call. Like, do we cancel this giant conference, like 400 people? And everyone said, no, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Which means. <laughs> You know, it's not just four days you lose because we all lost about four days right. of work, but it's four times, you know, the <clears throat> 10 people who sure. were on the committee. So it's like losing 40 days of work sure. before your conference. So whew, we whew, we did it and it went went really well, um, but it was it was a struggle. So but we, we pulled through. It's a good cause, uh, you know, and something like that to reorganize that would be very, very cumbersome. Tell so. somebody that's not familiar with ASAP exactly what your mission is Perfect. and what you guys do. Please. Yeah. So we are a community <clears throat> coalition, which means we are a group of volunteers that come together to strategize how to reduce addiction and its consequences in Pasco County. So how can we prevent addiction from ever happening? And how can we help people who struggle with addiction to live successful lives in recovery and prevent relapse? So there's so many things that we can do as a community, you know, and, and we think a lot of it is just education and that is so important and we do coordinate a lot of education, but a lot of it is very environmental. Like how do we dispose of our medications? Mm -hmm. If the majority of new substance misusers of opioids if they're just now starting to misuse them if the majority of them are getting it from other people's medicine cabinets how do we prevent that how do we how do we get people to dispose of their medications more safely well we invest in drop boxes that we then give to the sheriff's offices around the county and we do PSAs to encourage people to drop those off um, so that's just one small way we've worked with the sheriff's office and the county commission on different policies different moratoriums on pill mills different um, ordinances against spice uh, so we're very creative in, in our strategies but the only way we can be creative is if people come to the table you know we have people from the sheriff's office, kids, teachers, parents, all coming together to strategize uh, how to how to how to really do all of this, and that's what we are. So anyone is open to the, uh, to come. So all of you who are watching, if you want to volunteer for a good cause, you can come hang out with us. We have meetings every fourth Tuesday of the month. So our next meeting is October twenty fourth, ten to twelve at the Lando Lakes Community Center. Now that's being prepared to get that <laughs> say out there. I have to ask you, Monica. Yeah. How long have you been with the agency? Uh, three years. This three is my years. Third year, yeah. Was there something that triggered you to get involved with this? 
So always. So I, um, so I'm an advocate, and I didn't know what that word meant until I was in Washington D.C. and I was advocating. So I, you know, I. I personally have uh, struggled with mental illness in, in the past, and I struggled with anorexia. Uh, and when I first heard people sharing their stories about addiction, it really spoke to me. And I, mm. I, I, I enjoy <coughs> advocating for other people because people did that for me. Um, and so it, it was a natural fit. I volunteered with ASAP first when I, when I moved here. It was like the first organization I heard of when I moved here and I felt an immediate click and... You, you felt home. Yeah. You felt home. Yeah. yeah. And you know, this is something that, this is what has motivated me for this whole village, our village mm -hmm. show, yeah. because aren't we finding that people like Monica that has had like a, a personal revelation or a yes. personal engagement, that then they jump right in. And it seems because since we've been doing the chamber shows, so many people like yourself in the community are doing the same thing. Angel Cook is another one. Mm -hmm. yes. and, and just to listen to these stories. And you know, the best part of these stories is to deliver the message of hope. Mm -hmm. So if you're watching here today and you're thinking, you know, this is it, this is all I have for my life, no, don't ever give up. Because what you're about to hear in our village show today is going to be motivation, inspiration, and a whole lot of love. And that's exactly what it is. I can just feel that from you because <laughs> you took your life and you made the choice to do something with it and overcome, right? Well, and the, yes, absolutely, you make that choice, but it takes other people to help to help impact. So I didn't I didn't fully recover from that until someone empowered me and, and showed me how I could make a difference. So I love being able to do that with the community and empowering young people, empowering people who are passionate about this to make a difference because I find that very healing. So when you say empowering younger people, because mm -hmm. if we all mm -hmm. know what the word empower means, mm -hmm. it gives you that strength and the power to go mm -hmm. on. And you can make a difference. Exactly. You know, like so so for experiences that <clears throat> you may have felt have happened to you you can make a difference for your community or for other people so they don't have to deal with that or you can make your life better like you you learn these skills on how you can make a difference and that is that is really amazing so if so what are some of your um just some of your affirmations that you can give if we have maybe grandparents out there or parents or just maybe some of this watching that is you know maybe in crisis right now what could you say that will mushroom and really get out there in the airwaves. That's tricky because I think everyone's really different. But for I, you, for you. Right. Um, I would say, you know, lots of people struggle with this, so don't feel alone. Uh, and it doesn't always feel like it, but there is hope, and you have to let yourself want to accept that hope. And when you do that, there will be lots of people there ready to help you. And see, that, that just by the way you said that from your heart, that makes me feel like if I, if I did, that I would want to go for it, that I mm -hmm. would. Because so many people feel hopeless. Mm -hmm. And when you feel hopeless, you feel helpless. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you just give up. Mm -hmm. So to have those people that are there with you to help you get through these things is really amazing. So your meeting is when again? October 24th. Okay. But we have a really big event coming up, and you're holding the flyer. I am. So, yes. Yeah, so I am. Tell us about this, October 26th. So talking about hope, we couldn't have transitioned into this better. This is our yes. Nope Candlelight Vigil. This is our annual event to remember all of the people who have passed away from addiction. Just to explain the gravity of the situation you know I do a lot of data digging in in my job and we've seen a 33 percent increase in overdose fatalities in mm. one year mm. from 2015 in Pasco County from 2015 to 2016 we have seen a 33 34 percent increase in drug fatalities so it is an influencing and impacting a lot of people when we're looking at the people who have passed, they are in the 30 to 45 age range. These are parents. These are our neighbors. This is affecting our kids in our schools. And it's it's so important to, to, to take time to remember them in an area of dignity and respect and prevention because we do need to be preventing this. And we do need to give them the recognition of a life uh, just like any other, you mm -hmm. know, and it's such a stigmatizing topic, and this really takes that stigma away uh, in, a, in a way that we can all heal and work towards change. So, I mean, we have Commissioner Wells giving an address. We have uh, Chief uh, Kim Bogart giving an address. We have people in recovery themselves to share their stories. Uh, but most importantly, we're there to support the families who've lost people. 
and work towards prevention. So everyone can come October 26th from 5.30 to 8. Uh, we will have snacks. <laughs> I see you picking up and snacks. Yeah, I, I need my snacks at that time. I don't know how everyone else works at dinner time, but I need food. So I'm going to let you go ahead sure. and hold that. We're going to get yeah. a close up of this okay. because we do want you to yeah. show up. Yeah. Write this down and tell people if you know of some. You know, it seems like I don't know anybody that has not been affected by this. Right. I right. know of no one. I don't know anyone either. And that's another, you asked how I got involved in this. One of, um, another reason, um, aside from it speaking to me personally, is, you know, I have very good friends who really suffered in the uh, spice epidemic time, um, and they're still not quite the same. Uh, so, you know, it, it, has, it has affected everyone in a very different way. You know, all of us have either lost someone or know someone who's, who's lost their battle to addiction. And it's a chronic illness. It's a chronic illness. And sometimes it needs medication. It always needs behavior change, but it also needs social support. You know, people mm -hmm. who have diabetes need social support. People who have cardiovascular disease need social support. And for the most part, we don't really provide that for people with addiction. So this is the time. So. Hope everybody I, can come out. Well, you know, I in, in, in lieu of that, we have um, this last year we did it at the church, at the, and um, mm -hmm. the year before I stopped in at the, when you were at the mm -hmm. Verizon, but I was unable to stay, so mm -hmm. I didn't really get the impact. Last year at the church, guys, I got to tell you, it is so impactful, and the young man that spoke. Oh, my gosh. I'll never forget. I still can tell you that story. I, said, I just day. got goosebumps when you I said know, it. To, because you know, you he, said it. You know, he, was, he was hoping he was done. Mm -hmm. And they, and he was actually mad that they stopped him and saved him, but mm -hmm. that now this was last year was about two three years in or not even that long. You know, I mean, it's been going on longer since uh, since I've been in this position. So maybe this is our. I should know the answer to this. Well, like, no, I meant like, in terms of his recovery. Oh, his recovery. Was yes, about two years, yes. I think. But mm -hmm. guys, impactful. Get your kids mm -hmm. out there. Get anybody you know that's <clears throat> been impacted. As we said, there's probably none of us that don't know anybody that hasn't been. Mm -hmm. um, and don't be so, you know, it's this the, op the opioid addiction has become a real challenge because it's, it's not your standard get the guy off the street selling pills, yeah. or, you know, drugs like that. But it's, it's your neighbors, as, it's as Monica said, it's, sure. your, it's in their medicine cabinet. It's the kids getting into their parents' medicine cabinet. Mm -hmm. And um, I know I've had friends that have had surgeries where they were given, um, one of them, he got hydrocodone, and when he got home and realized what it was, he just took it. Probably shouldn't have, but he. No, don't tell but, me. No. Yeah, but, he, but he got. Let's put it. That he got rid of it. Yes, that's what he I. Got rid I, of it. I had. I had it too, mm -hmm. and I got I rid. Didn't even it. take one. I wouldn't. So this is one. a good time. Make sure if you have medications, you don't want to take it to one of our Dropbox sites here in Pasco County. No questions asked. That information is on our website on where you can dispose of that. And if you flush it down the toilet, it's just not good for our water systems. Yeah, you? that's why I was just so going to ask you because really I'm good thinking advice. people thinking they're, they're getting rid of it that way, but it doesn't. There's no way for us to filter through the chemicals that we put down like that right. so I mean eventually we will be drinking this kind of stuff and it impact it impacts our, our wildlife so don't do that um, oh so. that's really good advice and I can't thank you enough for thank coming you. on thank Monica you. you're such a delight mm -hmm. and really take heed to the advice today and it doesn't have to be a hopeless situation that's why we're here on our village we have time for a break and then when we come back we have two very lovely ladies that are going to join us and don't forget and, October 26 nope conference yes. of Verizon events Center. Yep. Thank yep. you. Yeah. And we'll see you there. Yes. And we'll have you back on the show again. Okay, good. Because I love Perfect hearing good. more about this. You Perfect. know, 11, 12 minutes is never enough. It's not. No. All right. <laughs> we'll be right back. Stay where you are.
Enjoy tranquil seclusion in an eco-lover's paradise. Paddling through the mangroves where the only sounds you'll hear are the sounds of nature. Because you deserve to relax on vacation, visit Pasco County, Florida. Hi everyone, welcome into My Chamber TV. However, it's our Village, Village TV. TV. Yes, it is. That's right, it's our special edition and it's really going very well. And thanks to you for watching the show because we bring the information to you to let you see how our village has come together yes, to make things better. And as a result <laughs> of this whole entire Tampa Bay area, especially after as they call it, Armageddon, yeah. if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, well. And so that's why we're here and we're bringing some really powerful people into the community right here onto the show. And Melissa Fahey is one of them from the Good Samaritan Clinic. I'm going to keep quiet because I want it to be all about you telling us everything that you have going on. First of all, how long have you been there? I've been at the Good Samaritan Clinic. October 1st was my 11-year anniversary. I knew it had been a really nice long time for you. So tell us how you got started and what it's all about and how people <coughs> can benefit from it. Absolutely. Um, I volunteered, actually, for the Good Samaritan Clinic for three years before I came on board as a paid staff member. I believe wholeheartedly in the mission of delivering free health care to folks that actually cannot afford it and are falling between the cracks. Mm. So I was raised by a single mom and am certainly a product of that exact household situation. So this became really very near and dear to my heart. Your passion. And um, I know that we can make a huge difference in our community as a result of giving quality health care. Well, I would, guess, I would guess so. And there's so many people that don't have insurance and won't go to the doctor for obvious reasons. So how does that, how does it actually work? Well, at the Good Samaritan Clinic, they started back in 1990. And um, folks are referred to us from churches, from hospital case management departments. Um, different nonprofit organizations are familiar with our, with our mission. <clears throat> Pardon me. So the folks come to our door and they must show us proof of Pasco County residence and proof of the household income. We want to make sure that we're taking care of the folks that, need that truly need it that the truly most. Need it. Absolutely, Paul and Barbara. Yeah. So once we um, do their intake interview and we can approve the patient, making sure that they have a diagnosis that we can actually treat at the clinic as well, mm -hmm. because it's primary <coughs> care with some sure. specialty care, mm -hmm. but. Um, it's all delivered by volunteer doctors, nurses, pharmacists, dentists, and people like you and I to help answer the phone and do the scanning and things of that nature. So the name of your show is exactly our, our mantra. It takes a village to yes. bring it all together. So once the person is approved, we schedule them for an appointment to see a primary care physician and the physician diagnoses they may give prescriptions, okay. and then we fill those prescriptions right there right in our there pharmacy. At the clinic. Correct. So they leave, they've been treated, they walk away with their medications. 
Well, our, our pharmacy is open two days a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. I see. And our clinic is open Monday through Thursday. And where is the clinic? We're located at 5334 Aspen Street in Newport Ritchie, Florida, um, 34652. It is um, in downtown Newport Ritchie, mm -hmm. and um, we've been in our current location now for 13 years. Wow. And yes. you've been there 11 out of the 13 years. I have. You I have, have seen a lot a lot in that time a lot of improvements a lot of help a lot of growth um, unfortunately <laughs> however that <laughs> speaks to the need yeah there's a great need in our community mm -hmm. and people are falling between the cracks in many areas mm -hmm. we feel our place at the table is if we can g get them healthy right then they become employable they can perhaps get a full-time job with benefits and no longer have the need for the free clinic. And that's life-changing. It's a beautiful and thing. And it's just life-changing. Melissa, you, you mentioned earlier that you work with, you know, this. you're open four days a week. Pharmacy's open two days a week. Mm -hmm. But I know from, you know, knowing you for a long time, you guys, if there's people out there that would like to volunteer, that would like to help, even if they can't physically volunteer, I know that I've brought you a CPAP machine that I, that was... They are so let them know how they can help either physically or with product. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So it is not just volunteering sweat equity, if you will. Sure. Um, you can certainly help us out by donating any non narcotic <coughs> medications because we are a limited licensed pharmacy. So no um class medicines it's certainly you know for pain we will just we will prescribe ibuprofen for mm -hmm. pain okay um type of thing but we are always accepting donations we survive on grants donations and fundraisers it is a true free clinic mm -hmm. so there's no billing that takes place there we have no uh, revenue stream steady that's coming in so we rely on grants donations and fundraisers and speaking of grants did not you get a grant recently we did we were the recipient a very proud recipient of a grant through Duke Energy they made a nine thousand nine hundred and ninety five dollar grant to our clinic and that will allow us to um, continue to have an LPN case manager on staff to help with the transition care for hospital gives us a referral of an uninsured patient. We actually send our, our, our excuse me, LPN case manager to the hospital to meet with that patient and break those barriers and allow the access for them to continue to get health care. That's just so amazing. It truly is, and it's, it's very fulfilling. I say often, I'm rich in my heart and not my pocketbook. I I say the same thing, I, I, exactly, because there, you know what, you can't, you can't put a price tag on this. You know, the value goes on, and it's that gift that keeps on giving. Now, you have some things coming up, and I know you have your cheat sheets there, so I want you to just go for it, girl. Thank you so much. The, some of the ways that we sustain our mission is by having fundraising yes. events. So our upcoming event is the 8th Annual Festival of the Trees. Our headlining presenting sponsor is Friendly Kia, which we're very proud to say he has been our sponsor since day one. Oh, yeah. really? So John, John Gillis. John Gillis. King of Price. Shout out for, yes, yes, yes. John Gillis. <laughs> Absolutely. So we're um, excited this year. It opens up the week before Thanksgiving, and this year we are moving the venue to be at the Columbian Event Center. Isn't that fabulous? It's a fabulous new event center. Yes, it is. It will fit all of our trees. We will have over 40 fully decorated trees and um, Christmas wreaths for the public to bid on. The highest bidder wins the tree, and we deliver the tree the very next day. That is just the coolest event around the holidays. That was one of the first ones that we actually promoted for on uh, for the West Pasco yep. Chamber. It is, yeah. actually, yeah. absolutely. And the event has grown immensely as a result of um, publicity such as this and word of mouth yeah. and through the West Pasco Chamber and we still um, we still have a we have one of the mini trees that we bid on a couple of years ago still sitting and we keep it out year round. We don't keep it lit up year round, but it's I gotta tell you guys, you have to you've gotta come out. The trees are absolutely gorgeous. They're decorated by different businesses. Everything from I know the chamber last year did one where everybody just um donated a, one of the balls that goes on the tree with a gift certificate that was attached to it and some of them are so creative there's been the the Grinch tree and I know that we mentioned John Gillis John don't know if it was last year but the year before 
bid very high on a tree and then gave it to that young lady that was in a wheelchair and her family. Yes, he bid on the Hello Kitty tree the Hello Kitty and tree, donated yes, that and to donated a young it lady to that, was, that there. was there. That's awesome. So it's it really is a special. And even if you don't bid on a tree, it's a special evening. It's a lot of fun. It was two years ago. I watched men bid on a tree and watched Steve Farrell stand behind him and keep up bidding them and men didn't men didn't know he was standing back there and he just <laughs> Steve kept going like this and then's just sitting there do 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 but you know it is really for a good course and that was the redneck tree that had the the the, sure, the coat absolutely. Was, was a, I mean they're really re it really is a, a fun phenomenal event I know Rose is usually there with um, their hot chocolate Rosie's Bistro Rose's yes Bistro. indeed Team Farrell um, Rosie's Bistro my goodness Tanglewood pre it's preschool. Yeah, so there's some goodies there for you to Lots munch on. And so it's and it's just a fun evening. And it's if like I said, even if you don't bid on one, they've got some beautiful wreaths to bid on too. We've done that a couple of years. But even if you don't, it's fun to come and watch and watch the people bid and know that all that money is going to a really, really good cause. The thing that's really cool is I think I don't know if Gordon does it again, but I know that no no, no man moving, moving, a really good oh, friend. And we've yes. had Gordon we've on had here on. before. Mm -hmm. Um, he, he takes his men and his trucks and his time and he makes sure all those trees get delivered. He does a phenomenal job. I'll tell you, literally, it takes a village. Yes. So this event, um, we have, again, over 40 Christmas trees, fully decorated, all different themes from the most spectacular trees all the way down to the theme of the redneck Christmas right. tree. And um, it's just a ton event. It kicks off the holiday seasons. I hope everybody will join us on um, Friday, November the 17th from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. You can buy tickets on Eventbrite, and we're very excited. We're hoping to have a net profit this year of about $30,000, and with those dollars, it will go right back into that indigent health care and help save a life. That is just so incredible, and this is what you know, we, we just had our first guest with Monica, and you can just feel the love from each of your hearts. And, and you too, Paul, because you've been involved with the community for quite a while. I had no idea this village really does come together oh, until yes. I saw it from my own eyes and interviewing the people and just watching it. But you don't really get the full story unless you're kind of in the thick of things i mean your mainstream news well goodness knows i mean you don't hear everything all the True. good stuff no. you hear all the bad stuff <laughs> but that's what we want to bring our village show to you and really grow this show to let you see the people that are making a difference right here in our hometown i raised both my boys up here and i had no idea it was such a close-knit village as it is so this is really a wonderful way to give back and i can't thank you enough for coming on the show today oh i'm so oh, grateful awesome. for the opportunity thank you so much well good luck happy holidays it will be here before you know oh, boy, it isn't that the truth melissa well thank you and, and thank Friday, you november 17th Friday, November 17th, Columbian Event Center. Columbian, and I am telling you, it is top notch. Been there, and it is gorgeous. So we're going to take a brief little time out. When we come back, we have two more pillars in the community.
Enjoy tranquil seclusion in an eco-lover's paradise. Paddling through the mangroves where the only sounds you'll hear are the sounds of nature. Because you deserve to relax on vacation, visit Pasco County, Florida. You're on. <laughs> and we're, we're back, just like that. My Chamber TV is back, but we're offering our Village TV because the Village does come together and bring some really fantastic people, as the Chamber does as well. But I have two very beautiful ladies that are willing to step up, step out, and speak out on a subject that is really hard to talk about. And so I want to thank both of you ladies for coming on, Tammy White and Marie Kelly, um, you're doing a fundraiser, a walk to fight suicide here in Pasco County because this has affected both of you and your lives. Um, Tammy, uh, if you want to just start and share from your heart like you've been doing in the community, this is not your thing to do, no. but you're no. willing to do it to help <clears throat> others. No, it's just it's something that I just started doing recently. Um, but a lot of people know me in the community. I've been in business in Pasco County for a really long time. And um, I kind of felt that if, um, if I have to be the one to bring the awareness, um, I'm willing to do that. A lot of people know I lost my husband a year and a half ago. Um, he struggled with MS for 25 years and alcohol addiction towards the end. And he ended up taking his life at the age of 62. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, we had been together for 28 years. That's tough. That's really tough. But you know what? You're you're a walking example of hope because you're here to try to help others realize that they can get help, right? Well, it's the people that are struggling with taking their lives, but a lot of times you actually don't see it. Nobody in our our family, our group of friends, um, ever saw this coming. Uh, anybody that, that knew my husband, a lot of people in the community, you would never, you would never, it wouldn't even cross your mind. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't um, cross your mind. And um, I felt that um, it's, it's time, we need, it, it's one of those subjects that are still taboo to talk about. And the ironic yeah. thing is, is if you're in a room of just a few people, it has touched in one way or another more than just one or two people in that room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's, people don't like to talk about it. I was talking to Marie at a meeting the other night and just as just a person starting to speak out about it, I can stand in front of a group of people and when you bring up suicide, you can see the the energy of the room change and the demeanor of the people because you, they they don't want to talk about it or deal with it and it's a reality and it's a it's a sad reality in our own community the year my husband passed away in 2016 there were 104 recorded suicides in Pasco County 
In just Pasco County? In just Pasco mm -hmm. County. We have, what, 67 counties in the state of Florida. Yeah. We were number nine. And that's just recorded suicides. Record, yeah. um, some drug overdoses. There's other, other people that have probably taken their lives that... It wasn't so apparent. Right, exactly. It wasn't so apparent. Yeah. Tammy, just out of curiosity, would, and I know it's a tough subject, so I don't want to, if I ask a question that you don't want to answer, just let me know. But that's okay. Do you, now that you look back, were there any signs? Was there anything you would have done differently or seen? Or um, Looking back, um, probably, yes, but you, until, it's, it's really kind of ironic and, and talking to other people who have gone through it too, um, you don't actually sometimes really see it. Right, that's what I... Um, although, even within our own family, we had a couple of incidents happen that I wasn't made aware of, and one incident my, my husband and I were not made aware of, and sometimes I think, and, and, and it may not even, you know, be true that if I had those two pieces of information, maybe I could have changed the tra trajectory of that day. But then other um, professionals say that if, if somebody has it in their head that they're going to take their life, they're going to do it, but whether it also, it's that is, day or not. But is it also possible that had... Had he been aware of it too, it may have changed the trajectory also? I don't know. Um, in a lot of cases, by the time someone gets to that point, yeah. there's um, alcohol and drugs involved. And it's ironic that my husband was able to take his life because his blood alcohol was 3.11 or, or 0.311. I mean, right. it was... Alcohol poisoning happens between, um, I think, point three to five or somewhere yeah. in there. And a lot of people are like, how could he even have managed yeah. to do that? And we don't know. Unfortunately, those of us left behind, the majority of us, we're never going to have the answers. Right. We, right. We, we will never have closure. And because so, you cannot you cannot get into their mind. You don't yeah. know what happened. Exactly. So no, so now for you, it's a matter of getting through one day at a time. It's yeah. It's it's a struggle because when you live with and take care of, and you're in a partner with someone for so long, yeah. um, and this happens, I left one morning to go get our truck fixed. I was gone for two hours. I stopped by Pasco Camera to pick up. I was getting our um, wedding video, which was on VHS, because it was a long time ago. <laughs> Converted to DVD as a surprise for him. And I came home and found him. I was only gone for two hours. Mm. Wow. And it has totally changed my life. The ripple effect is tremendous uh, that people don't realize. Because, I mean, it affected me tremendously, of course, and his sisters and brother and our nieces and stuff. But the ripple effect of somebody taking their life is tremendous. Of course. And that's mm -hmm. people that are in that mindset that do that, they, they don't see that. Yeah. It's, it's about they've the got, that there's blinders on. It's, it's about whatever the pain is that they're in at that moment. And I would guess that going through something like that, there may be a question because until you go through something like that, do you, I'm guessing that you may have probably asked yourself, if I only... Oh, yeah. If you I live only, with that every day. I'm sure you do. And so... Yeah, you let, live with that every day. How do you let go of that? I don't know. I'm not there yet. And yeah. I don't know that I'll ever be there. I really don't. Yeah. Um, they call us suicide loss survivors which is a term that I've just come to know within the last couple of months because 
I hadn't re really got involved or started speaking out about this because, um, as you know, a few months after my husband passed away, I it's broke my leg thing. really bad. Really bad. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. I was and, speaking at one of your events. Yeah, oh, and I was yeah. I was laid up for months, yep. and I I couldn't <clears> participate <throat> in last year's walk because I couldn't walk. But um, I, mm. talking to a, a few people and saying, you know, this is this is. Are the term for us. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like a sur I'm not a survivor yet. I don't feel like I'm right. a survivor yet. But then I have people that say, Tammy, you are. You, I mean, you're here, you're talking, yeah. you're alive. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, well, maybe. But yeah, you deal, you're going to, I think you're always going to deal with that. Always. It gets easier in some ways, but you're always carrying it with you. So, and Marie, um, it was your son. Yes, my no. oldest son. Nine years ago. Almost nine years ago. Mm -hmm. It'll be nine years in December. What What do you feel comfortable sharing? Um, I mean, he was a bright, brilliant, funny, athletic. He had so much going for him when he was young, on up into his mid-teen years, and that's when things changed. He was dealing with some anger issues. Um, and we tried to deal with those the best we could. I understood it. Still have to parent. Um, he started experimenting with drugs, beginning with marijuana. And um, his choice of friends changed. He dropped out of sports. His grades started to slip, um, but still held on well enough to be able to graduate high school on time. Um, and moved out about a month before he graduated from high school because he wanted his own rules. You know, we're just, I'm thinking just normal teenage rebellion. Um, and there were other people involved in some of the behavior issues that we were dealing with, mostly at home, not at school or anywhere else. Um, he had a couple of jobs and he performed well at them. But he, when he was ready to quit, he would quit. <laughs> Um, after he passed, I heard he quit uh, Dairy Queen by climbing out the drive through window. So he had a comical side to him. <laughs> well, that, that brings a, a smile to your face, right? Yes, yeah, yes. I mean, how can you not yeah. laugh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe not at the time, but... <laughs> um, and so he, when he moved out, he was holding his own. Um, for a couple months, not living in the best of circumstances, right. but had his job. And then <clears throat> one of his friends was able to get an apartment. He moved in and um, and he was doing okay. He had, he had a good job, but then management changed and he quit that one. So he was jobless for a short time, but then he, then he got, you know, got another one. Um, I was not aware of the behavior that he was having amongst his friends at this, you know, where, where he lived because his friends didn't, didn't tell me. He was having anger outbursts and he punched a few walls, broke through, broke something, broke the TV. You know, it was those big box TVs. Um, took a trip to Atlanta without, well, he had his phone, but he didn't, he wasn't answering it. Didn't tell anybody he was going. We were living in Birmingham, Alabama at the time. And so he just, risky behavior. Um, he was into rollerblading and skateboarding and the crazy stunts, going down the rails. On, <laughs> uh, cracked open his knee a few months before he passed. Um, he was not afraid of anything. And yeah, you know, looking back, I wish he was, you know. Uh, and then, you know, he's, he let me know a few months prior that he was struggling with um, some depression issues and just feeling out of sorts and like he can't relate to people and, you know, he, some of what he was sharing I could relate to, just being a little more quiet myself and, but he was great with his friends so I was like, 
it's okay. You're, you're normal. You know, <laughs> we all go through those times. Of course. And of course. Um, we went on a family vacation. He and you know got through Thanksgiving. I was when he let me know. I I called the one eight hundred two seven three talk line and got some information. I talked with other people and. You know, this is why we need to get education out there. So those other people were professionals, you know, um, and told me that he's fine, that he'll be fine. He's a smart, smart kid. He's going to pull through this and he'll be fine. And um, anyway, uh, he started making things right, relationships. And you don't recognize that until after the fact. Um, you know, relationships within our own family, uh, with, with some friends. Um, and he was in good spirits. Thanksgiving, we had a wonderful Thanksgiving. And then two weeks later, got that horrible knock at the door. Mm. Um, well, I'm sorry for your loss. Um, you're, you two brave ladies are here to help anyone out there that may have someone in the family. Sometimes you just, I don't know, maybe you don't see it coming or maybe you do after the fact, but you guys are on a mission to try to get information out to help people. Mm -hmm. So we've got um, an event that's coming up that is one thing. We've got telephone numbers for you, another thing. And the two of you ladies are able to go through this in, in efforts to maybe help save lives out there today. So let's talk about the event. Um, Walk to Fight Suicide, Pasco County, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, it's coming up on Saturday, October 28th. At Sims Park. And it's in Sims Park. And look, we put this up for you here. Out of the Darkness, Community Walks, American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Just both of you jump right in there and just, you know, Tammy's got a team for this. So tell us about that. Um, anybody can join, um, register a team to help raise money. Um, I started a team in honor of my husband, and the team is just Bobby. <laughs> That's how everybody knows him. <laughs> you know? um, a, I have a goofy picture of him with a fish on our our team page um, um, where you can have people join your team to also help raise money um, my team is actually almost halfway to our goal for next um, that we set for our our personal team goal and actually Marie can talk about the the goals for the um, the whole walk which is has changed since Monday, <laughs> our meeting. It's like tremendous. It's, I, I, yeah. I couldn't believe the email that how much, what it's doing. So you can talk about the uh, Okay, well, the um, first of all, the walks are done all throughout the nation through the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. And we have, there's probably about 400 walks and they are our biggest fundraiser. Um, and the funds help provide the resources to the community. Um, this one being one, the Lifesavers Manual will have these at the walk. Um, what I love about these is there's a there's now a text line, 741741, along with the 1-800-273-TALK line. Um, and then there's crisis chat line, and there's always 911. Um, but the text line is, you know, a lot of people don't want to pick up the phone and call these days. So especially our younger, younger right. people of um, course you know the teenagers the college students young adults um, so it's a great resource and we will have plenty of those um, the so yes so that's our biggest fundraiser and the funds go to help provide these resources as well as resources for suicide loss survivors um, resources for getting into the schools to educate our our youth our teachers, our, the counselors, our um, first responders, everybody needs these. Um, anybody, can, there are trainings that the funds also help provide. I recently took the assist training and the safe talk training, and I'm actually going to be 
that the safe talk was about training to train. So that'll be exciting to because we need more people to get out there and, and train smaller smaller groups of people. So are you out there recruiting for volunteers too? For the walk? Mm -hmm. Yes, we are, have a good lineup of volunteers. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to be okay there, but we can always, you know, possibly always use, use, use more. Always use more. Um, yes, excuse me. That's cool. That is very cool. Mm -hmm. We have a good lineup of um, community sponsors. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, just going to say thanks to Fast Signs of Palm Harbor. They helped provide all these flyers. Uh, Junior Service League, our, our DJ Cease will be our DJ, and uh, Trinity Medical Center and Bay Care will be and out there, and along with a few others. My husband's um, boss, Precision yes. Survey Man Mapping, is yes. one of our major sponsors also. Yes. Um, Duran and Beam is our water sponsor. Yeah. And, and we really, and Farrell, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and we're really grateful. That's awesome. Really grateful for Ladies, that. Ladies, I, I, and it might just be me, but what time is the walk? Um, I'm looking at that here. What time does it start, honey? Registration starts at 9.30. 9.30? Then we'll have opening ceremonies at 11. Okay. And then we'll start walking about 11.30. Okay, very good. And, and the goes to? Yeah. The length is approximately two miles. It's a very casual walk. You don't even have to walk if you don't want to. Um, the DJ will be playing the whole time, so there'll be other entertainment. I think we're also going to have somebody out there doing yoga for anybody that yeah, wants before some the walk or relaxation. Yeah. There you go. Nice. Very yeah. nice. Yeah. But Very we'll be nice. doing a figure eight around Sims Park and around the park area. So we'll do that twice and it's roughly two miles. Oh, that's, that's Got any room for somebody to come out and do Tai Chi? <laughs> You're more than welcome. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Not sure I, that I, is. I yeah. talked yeah. to Tammy yeah. about yeah. that. Yeah. We'll, we'll hook up. Oh, you want me doing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Oh, there it is. <laughs> No, we'll get you dancing. That would be cry, we'll that'd be cry cheap. <laughs> <laughs> We're cry also cheap. gonna be doing a dove release. Oh, and yeah. um, beautiful at the end, right before at, we walk. Right. And then also the monitors on the stage. We have um, a digital picture dedication to our loved ones who have passed and pictures will be scrolling. Nice. Mm -hmm. Very in the very past nice. we've had what we've called memory trails where we'll have pic pictures submitted and then we'll have them posted along the beginning of the trail. But this year with it being at Sims Park, we have those digital boards. Nice. Yeah, we can that's, display it up there. Right. That's such a great mm -hmm. And it's part. not costing anything. And there you so. go. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. it makes it better. Well, yeah. I think it's gonna be a, a really good event for you guys. And so it is October 28th, mm -hmm. Saturday. Registration uh, at 9.30 a.m. And the walk begins at 11. No. Or no. Well, 9.30 is 9:30. registration. Okay, 9.30 then, registration. So that time, if it, you know, people get there early, they can walk around the tables, the vendor, well, at vendor resource tables. Um, nice. They can check out what's available. And We're also going to be having um, raffles and silent, silent auctions. Oh, good. The oh. raffle will take place after we're done walking. So okay. and we'll announce before we walk. To, so it to sounds that. like it's going to be pretty good. Mm-hmm all day affair. Yes. Yeah, it's going to be good. in be we, any nice frame pictures out there for the sound? Actually, auction? yes, I am donating. <laughs> <laughs> and your business is? Tammy White Galleries. There you go. There you go. And you've been in business for a long time here. Yes. Uh, about 24 years. Yeah, I think she knows what she's doing over <laughs> there. <laughs> well, I tell you, um, do you, are you, is this what you're doing full time? At this time of year, yes. <laughs> I bet. Pretty much, I yes. I, I work from home well, part-time. You mentioned something. I know we're probably running short on time, but you mentioned something about your son. One that is, it had um, You had siblings. How many other, how many, you said he was the oldest of you? He was the oldest of four, so I have three four. others. And how did, just real quick, did it, how did it affect the other three? My one son, Stephen, who's four years younger than Kenny, he's, he's very quiet, um, and so it's hard to get info out of him uh, but he's he's okay and then my other son Joey he his birthday is a day before Kenny's oh. and 11 years so um, he's he has a tough time and yeah. he's just turned 18 so there we I watch him but he's good he's good. he's a good kid and he's doing well for the most part but and then my daughter she's uh, just turned 13 she was four at the time okay. Well, you two ladies are just Thank delightful, you. and Thank you. again, good luck with the walk, and uh, we'll have you back again. Just keep keep us posted on other events that are coming up, and um, 
we're going to take, go ahead, actually, we're, we're done with the show. Come back and join us on our right. Village TV next Gotta month. Gotta go. Yes, ma'am.